Okay. Okay. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. All right, so here we are back again, jiggity jig, with a little bit of Luris Jund, and this is going to be followed by Classic Jund here on Jund Judy. For anyone who's curious, that is Thursday in French. So Luris Jund was one of the prominent builds of Luris in the previous metagame before the companion change, and somebody has managed to 5-0 with it. I did not remember to keep their name on hand. But uh, both Classic Jund, which we'll be playing afterwards, and Luris Jund were in the most recent 5-0 deck dump. So we're going to try both of these out in the new modern meta and see how they fare. Um, I'm a little surprised to not see Renin 6 in this deck list. This seems very, very heavily grouped around the 2 slot with three Scavenging Goos in the main deck, which I would not have thought would be as common right now. We've got full 4 Assassin's Trophy and a full 4 Coligan's Command. But we do have the uh, tiny wombo combo that is Mishra's Bobble, Mishra's Bobble, and Dark Confidant, as well as Luris. Uh, obviously, it takes more time to get Luris out of our sideboard and into play, which is why I would have thought the builds with Renin 6 would be more likely to be popular um, and stick around after the Luris nerf. It does not seem to be the case, so we're going to see how this looks in a league. Uh, I have very few feelings about exactly what this deck list look like, looks like, although, uh, as our last couple of leagues have pointed out, we can expect Storm to have a presence in this league at some point. Uh, to that end, we've got three Damping Spheres. They have a nice split uh, against the Big Mana decks, which are another one of the worst matchups for Jund. And we've got Nile Spell Bombs to deal with some Graveyard Synergies, Collective Brutality to try to deal with uh, Burn and other things of that nature. So, reasonable setup here. So, let's hop on into the queue. Um, as I mentioned yesterday, and I mentioned uh, before I did my deck tech on stream, uh, I am still a little under the weather. Um, I have sought the advice of a medical uh professional and been provided with some medication so hopefully we will see some improvement in my condition over the next couple days um i hope that i can make it through both of my decks for today but um we'll just monitor my energy level as we go what is up jacob is boss 27 I got a kitty cat. What do you got? Nothing. Oh, they also have a kitty cat. All right, well, we got a mulligan that one. This is much, much better. I don't think I need three lands in my opener, and I don't need double black for anything, so we're just going to ship this Verdant Catacombs. Um, burn on the other side of the table is most likely... Uh, sorry, Luris on the other side of the table is most likely to be burn. Um... Could be a lot of different things, but it's most likely to be burn. So I think I'm going to start off with uh, Black Cleave Cliffs into Seal of Fire. Then we have the option to shock in on turn. How does it tell what the opponent was on? Is that from a deck dump? Yeah, so as far as I can tell, the bot um, always pulls from Goldfish. So what it seems to be doing is it, it goes through the Goldfish database looking for that player's name and gives you the most recent list that that player was playing. Um, which of course is not necessarily going to be what that player is playing in the league that you are in. Um, so always take it with a grain of salt, I, I would say. Walking Blista on top. That's a yikes for me, dog. It's going to kill the sh out of my Dark Confidant. But we can seal of fire it, so kind of got to... Damned if we do, damned if we don't situation here. So I think I'm just going to go tap land into Inquisition here. See what I can snag. Hanger back and Metallic Mimic. Well, we're definitely taking this Metallic Mimic, I think. And then next turn they could play X equals 2 Hanger back or an X equals 2 Walking Ballista. In this case it is. Yeah, yes, true. But there are a good number of uh, players who, if they've recently 5-0'd or say 3-2'd a prelim or anything like that, 
with a deck, they're likely to keep playing it because um, there's a lot of people who play Magic Online in such a way where they're they're trying to like ticket farm basically. So we'll talk. Take their Walking Ballista. We're gonna kill the Hangerback Walker here where it's just got two um, counters on it, and then we just have to slow roll our way on the next turn. It's not looking great for us, but it's not looking too bad yet. Their hand was was just two lands uh, before this. Nice top deck. That's a big yikes. So we could play anything on our hand out here, um, but I'm going to choose to play Croxa. If we top deck a fetch land specifically, we'll be able to cast uh, Croxa out of the graveyard as a 6-6 six, six next turn. And our opponent does not currently have the four mana required to crank their Walking Ballista. If they do get that, we're going to be in big old trubs. We're in big old trubs. Remember that thing that I said we'd be in? We're there. We made it. Looks like we made it. And that is potentially one of the few lands that will not allow us to cast this Croxa, so it looks like we're dead to rights here in game number one. We did not draw any copies of Kuligan's Command or anything else that would be particularly useful here. I think if they pick off my Dark Confidants and crack in for six and then... Okay, we're just dead. They attack for six and they shoot me for four. Is that correct? Yeah. So if they see it, they can just kill me here. Yeah, yeah, they got it. Well done. Good job, Chris. Okay, so Nature's Claim, definitely good here. Fatal Push, also quite functional. Uh, Nile Spellbound doesn't work, but Engineered Explosive sure does. And then I think Scavenging Use is probably okay to bring in here. Um, you take out one Croxa and four Dark Confidants? No, they're going to go uh, empty-handed pretty quick. So... Maybe we'll do something like this. Yeah, I think I, I think I'm somewhat happy with this configuration. Yeah, that seems to be a new feature from the MTG bot. Um, it was not doing that before. Uh, there was a period where the MTG bot was broken. Uh, apparently, Watsi went after their account, so uh, it was not functioning. This is all removal, which is okay. It's an okay way to start for our deck. Um, yeah, Black Cleaves into Inquisition. Oops. Um, yeah, so that, that functionality appears to be new. Welding Jar. Yikes. I think I'm taking out their walking blister here. Yeah, because I can't... Uh... Well... Ozolith has the potential to be devastating. If I trophy a walking blister and they've got counters on it, they might... Sack multiple things. Yeah, I think the Ozolith is actually the bigger threat here. Their hand does not currently have a way to turn on Revolt for their Fiddle Push. Oh no, they've got a Welding Jar if they wanted to use their Welding Jar aggressively. Okay. 
Okay, not bad. I'm gonna play the Seal of Fire. Pass the turn. I think depending on what their next turn is. No, they're just gonna play the Walking Blister, right? For X equals one, I would assume. So my next turn is likely going to be putting Laris in my hand. We got Pete Land, Oligda, Big Moth in hand. Hanger back walker. You didn't have that in your hand earlier. I don't like it. Okay. Well, nothing I have in play is going to cost me any mana. I definitely want red here. Do I want more red and black? Uh, sorry, I want I want I want access to green. Sorry. Access to green is what we're looking for there. In case we ever draw a Tarmogoyf. All right. What is coming up for you? I'm going to go fix a mower. All right. Well, catch you later, mower fixing master. Another ink moth on top. Yikes. Well, skews ain't not bad. So if we go get our Luris and then we play the Luris next turn, we can get a Bobble back, which is pretty reasonable. They'll be able to crank their Hanger back Walker, but the only option I have for that is to seal a fire in response to their cranking and then Assassin's Trophy it. And I can still do that um, on a future turn. So let's just put the Luris into my hand. Uh, we're going to Bobble them on their turn again. Hopefully they don't top deck like Sideboard and Thoughtseize or something. Okay, uh, now we have access to double seal of fire, so let's see what happens if I kill, try to kill their hangerback walker. They might just crank it in response. Yeah. And take the two tutus. They do choose to regenerate it. Okay. Um, they still have access to fatal push, so... I think what I want to do is play Dak Confident. And then if they crank their hanger back walker, we're going to uh, trophy it on the next turn. They still got that fatal push hanging out in their hand. They played, uh, they did not yet play this blooming marsh. So that was on top. So they have another ink moth. There it is. They still have a forest, a blooming marsh, a push, and a ballista. They still have a ballista. Well, crap. Forgot. Forgot they still had the ballista. Womp womp. Yeah. But I'll take that uh, that usage of a ballista there. That that's that's fine by me. Absolutely. Just just fine. I'll take it. You know, it's not not fast. Uh, if I get green here. I can still kill the hanger back, so let's get the green just in case they decide they're gonna crank at my end step. They did not. Nature's claim is a this is an okay pickup. Ain't not bad, as I like to see. Nature's claim is incredibly mana efficient coming up here. All right, so I definitely want to kill this now. I. Th I think trophy is fine. It's kind of annoying because this is going to give them extra land so they can sack their nurturing peatland here. 
And then they already have a forest. I guess it's technically possible we're going to run them out of basics fairly quickly. So one of the things I did mention in the latter half of the deck tech is how this version is not playing any copies of Rancix. Or if I didn't, I meant to. Because I find it incredibly strange that uh, this deck, which can grind so incredibly well... Um, that being one of the advantages of the Jund Luris deck was it was able to outgrind a lot of the non-Luris decks, but also the other versions of Luris. And then Ren 6 gives you such a good game against some decks in the format. And the nice thing about the Jund Luris deck is unlike a lot of other Ren 6 decks, I mean, this deck is just playing like Lightning Bolts and Assassin's Trophies and Coligan's Commands as part of your general game plan. So you really kind of get to go to the distance with those. Um, okay. So in theory... They're out of removal here, because that was their push. So this is their hand right now. These two, Luris and one. There's the Blooming Marsh. Now we're going to have to deal with their Luris. Um, they've got one, two, three, four, five, and then we know they have the forest. So they're going to be able to play Luris into Hangerback Walker here and kill my Luris. Um, my Luris will kill their Luris, their Luris will kill my Luris, so. It's the circle, the circle of death. Number nine to do, buddy, to now. Did you die to beat, buddy, now? All right. Goodbye, Luris. You were too, too good for this world. So, they're going to... They should play Forest here, which I believe they have in their hand, but any untapped land will do. Luris, uh, oh, they can't play a Walking Blista X equals two. That CMC is too high for Luris. He won't allow them to play it out of their graveyard like that. For the edification of Roy the boy, when you get here, you get to tell me that I... Edification? Is that what I want there? Validation? Validation. Roy the boy would have known that before. Yeah. <laughs> For my own edification, Roy the boy would have provided me with the information that, Zach, you're forgetting the thing that you know, that you're a judge and you know this, that you can't uh, play something for a converted mana cost four with Alluris. Ah, Lanoir Reborn, you say. Very well. Aha! That will get the Walking Ballista bigger, though. So I get to kill... Oh, they're getting Hangerback Walker? Okay, well, whatever. Kill the Luris as fast as possible. One walking lad. Oh, for the love of... Of course they drew another one. Why Why would they not? All right. Well, we're going to draw one of our four of Coligan's Command any minute now, I assume. Would be nice. Or not. Yikes. <laughs> it's amazing. It's like their deck with uh, Walking Ballista is good at my, uh, against my deck of X1s. And it's a real shame that somehow we've drawn zero... Good lord. All right, I don't think we can ever beat that card uh, on this game state. We drew no uh, early Tarmogoyfs in either game, too. So they would, they would be able to wall this reasonably effectively, but that's just not going to be an option. Unfortunately. I'm really wondering what they're doing futzing around with these Ink Moth Nexuses instead of attacking. Like, they have more mana than they know what to do with, so I'm really not sure. And they have an animation module, so the animation module has an activatable ability for three colorless mana. Hold on. Um, that says... Uh, choose a counter on target permanent or player. Give that permanent or player another counter of that kind, which would allow them to um, continue to add uh, poison counters to me as soon as a single poison counter had been put on me. So I, it's probably just because they want to take this line, put a bunch of Thopters into play, and kill me this way. 
but it's interesting. Interesting to know. And they chose to draw there before I let them search for a land, which is a strange choice too. Um, but to each their own, you know. Not going to have a problem with them. All right, I have no green mana available. I will be back in two seconds. I've got to grab my water. Of course, I had to uh, attempt to assign a blocker that I am unable to assign. Thank you, Magic the Gathering Online. Always technically correct, the best kind of correct. Mark down worker. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we're super duper dead for next turn, I believe is the technical terminology. So we can gain one, two, three life, assuming that there is, in fact, a snow-covered forest in my deck. So this is sort of life neutral if I go after these now. Did I actually cut a scavenger use? Am I that silly? No, I left them all, uh, left them all in. So we're at six, we're gonna take six, seven, eight, eight, yeah, we're just dead here. Can't do anything. We all shoot. Easy loss to a deck that goes bigger and can grind potentially better than us. Now, then then again, uh, we never drew a Culligan's Command, we never drew a Tarmogoyf, uh, the Scavenging Ooze came up late, so tricky one there. Okie dokie. Uh, we are on the draw here, and we are against Elven 7. They have no companion. We're going to go ahead and keep this medium hand and get a Blood Crypt. All right. Well, that's... It's a yikes for me, Doug. Okay, just got a little bit better. And by a little bit better, I mean a lot of bit better. Inquisition? What in the what? Yeah, I can deal with that. Huh. 
opponent's playing, I believe, the new hotness that is, is it Delver in Modern? In Modern. And... So we've got instant, sorcery, and land. So we're just going to throw down this Goyf as a 3-4. Goyf, 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 Goyf. Marge, I'm going to play this guy because he's so good at being a Goyf. Bing, 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 bing. Did not, did not play out the other Pyromancer. So their hand is currently Young Pyromancer, Mystic Sanctuary, plus one. So we've got double red for this turn. So let's start out with a Seal of Fire. What say you, opponent? Have you any thoughts? Hmm? Picked up a remand. I'll take it. Cool. I didn't want it in play anyway. I wanted. I wanted. I wanted it in, in in play, not in the graveyard. Well, I got a five six swing. Smack him. Burn him. Burn him like the roof's on fire. I vote so we form just like an angry mob, just like a whole bunch of men just running. So they got a spell snare in their hand that's literally, literally value free here. They're resetting a remand, which could be a pain in the butt, but they're not going to be able to draw it yet unless they have like an opt. And play the sanctuary. So their hand is. I know one of the cards in their hand. Okay. I want to say I should know one of the cards in their hand. I can't remember. I know the top card of their deck is the Remand. Smoosh? Smoosh. Okay. Um, what about Seal of Fire? They're at six. Good lord. Uh, so we just gotta kill this Pyromancer. Kill him while the killing's good. Play the Bobble. You know what? Let's just try to bolt this Delver now if they have another remand or or such. Yeah, okay, cool. And we'll just get to play this tap then. If they had another remand, they'd be able to put that back in my hand and I'd be able to shock the land and play it again, but uh They did not. Looks like an easy one for Jund. Removal, 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 Tarmogoyf. Oh, did that Gorf go ahead and kill you? Oh, Jesus. What a massacre. Babble. Boop. They did flood reasonably hard here. They're uh, definitely... Definitely feeling it. 6-7, Tarmogoyf. Good lord. And here comes the ambulance. Good golly, oh my. This time we're going to go on the distance tonight. Coming back out of retirement yet again. Charmer Goyf, like the Rolling Stones, never really truly retiring here. So I think I'm going to bobble myself because if I'm going to draw... No, I'm going to bobble them. So the only thing I could draw that's playable as an instant is my one other lightning bolt, I think. Um, the bobble is... Really? I guess they don't know if I'm actually going to play anything else this turn, and they want to make sure that they get that remand off to draw a card. That's fair. They're probably going to scaling turn, shuffle away whatever is on top here, which they're going to be a little sad about, or at least they would be if they ever found out. Although Archimedes Charm actually doesn't help them against the Tarmogoy, okay, so... Whatever doesn't Archmage's Charm, Archmage's Charm's the Tarmogoyf. 
So they could get a Mystic Sanctuary here, but they have literally nothing they can reset that um, that allows them to deal with this Tarmogoyf. So, goyf, 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 goyf. Oh, of one mind for the full full price. Yikes. And that's how you do it in game one. Heading into game number two here. Fatal Push and Collector Brutality looking fantastic. Now, the most important thing about the spell Collector Brutality in a matchup like this, you want to be 110% sure you are not firing that off at a time where your opponent is having access to any type of counter magic. Especially if you are escalating it, you can have one disastrous turn. Okay. So, we're going to make one more cut. I feel like Dark Confidant is probably the right place to be, because I'm cutting the Scoozes, which means I'm not going to have any life gain. I feel like keeping most of the discard is probably a good idea, and cutting most of the Scoozes is probably a good idea, but... Um, but I, I can't go whole hog like that because then I'll just end up taking too much damage. And Cole against Command is expensive. Let's let's get another scavenging use back in here. I just don't want to be playing things that are that expensive. It's uh, it's harder to resolve them against Counter Magic and Remand really buys them a lot of time. I'll be back in two seconds. Hand is okay-ish. Uh, Assassin's Trophy is not a great piece of removal against them, but our opponent took a mold of six, and we're on the on the draw, so we're way up on cards. So Trophy is a reasonable piece of removal. We're just looking for more Fatal Pushes, Lightning Bolts, Seal Fires. Island into nothing is a good start for us. We are likely to grab Overgrown Tomb with this. Let's see what's on the top of their deck over there on their upkeep no no uh, on my turn is fine because we draw lightning bolt we want to have it we're not necessarily going to be able to cast it this turn but we do want to have it remand okay so they has a remand opt all right did they draw it they did okay they did, in fact, draw a remand. Yikes! That's, uh... Yeah. That's a card you could legally draw here. Yes. Yes, it is. Overgrown Tomb. Oh, this could get ugly fast. No shock. This is really frustrating if they have another remand specifically. Anything else? Any other kind of counter magic? Yeah. 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 Okay. So we have to discard the hand size, which is really frustrating. Um, we're losing the extra card we had from them mulling. And, uh, and they just... Uh, been able to just sort of time walk us. Repeatedly. If I board in the, uh, the engineer explosives, I did not. Land? Nope. Okay. Well, uh, artifact creature, yeah, this is a 4-5. Let's play a 4-5. So they're going to be able to block this this bad boy forever, but uh, 
We're also going to be able to stem the bleeding from their ground beaters. Top card was a Serum Visions. That's a yikes from me, dog. Yeah. They're going to get a lot of tokens here in a hurry. Okay. So they can reset a spell. Hulligan's Command is a real, real medium here. Um, I think I'd rather fire off an Assassin's Trophy on their end step to go after one of their Pyromancers rather than anything else I could be doing because that gives me a bigger window on my turn to deal with their creatures. Obviously, they have five mana, but... Oh, boy... I'm going to reset Opt or Serum Visions here, I would imagine. Possibly Remand. Yeah. Alright, we're going to try to kill one of their Pyros here. Uh, this is actually close to a sort of last-ditch effort, because I don't actually have a way to deal with this many tokens, so... Yeah. So yikes for me, dog. What is up, Jiggy Wiggy? Yes, we are playing several Jund. Currently 0-1, we got trashed by hardened scales, black-green scales, and uh, we were having a tough go of it here in game two against Is It Delver. Um, well, to be fair, we, we trashed them in game one. But we stalled on lands while they were stalling on lands, but they were playing remands. No, actually, they weren't stalling on lands. They basically hit all their land drops. See, what I need to hit is a Lightning Bolt or Seal of Fire to get to at these young Pyromancers, because it's a lot more mana efficient. Also, I missed the, uh, missed the end of turn fetch. Yeah, I'm just going to scoop this one up. We're not going to be able to recover quickly enough. Gotta get that engineered explosives into the deck here. And then, is there any way I can get my curve down? Not so much, I pretty much did the best I could. Revan is so brutal when you're behind, exactly. Yeah, and I I, uh, I could have tweaked this list before I started playing it, but I didn't. Um, it does. You got to tell me which ones you think are going to look good. I um, Grizzly Pyromancer. You're going to have to run the text of that one by me. I know it's a green creature that makes bears. Yeah, this hand is good. This hand is exactly what we need. I like that card. I like that card a lot. That maybe was a mistake because I'm not going to be able to play trophy next turn. But I can't imagine wanting a trophy on turn two. Yeah, that's... Yeah, you get a treasure token, right? It has the correct uh, subtype for an all that glitters. Remember that. Lotus Petal Tokens, I wish. If it was, um... If it was Time Spiral, they would have. 
Because Time Spiral has Llanowar Elf tokens. It has um, Fairy... Cl cloud of Fairy? Sprite Fairy? Fairy Sprite? It's a blue 1-1 one, one, uh, high flying. Cloud Sprite? Something like that. Yeah, right? But, I mean, they brought back phasing, right? Like, that's sweet. I I don't care how largely irrelevant it is. I am super stoked for phasing to be back. I Just the philosophical um, change that, that that means is it makes me real happy. I feel like it has some other good cards for Kinnon. I feel like the Kinnon deck definitely wants to play Cryptic Commands, but then I want to play Mystic Sanctuaries, and then we're really kind of building a different deck, so I'm going to I'm gonna do my best to uh, to stop myself from getting them. No, it doesn't. No, no, no. I know, I know, I know, I know. I know. <laughs> you got to whack me with the jank stick. You play jank here. Jank! <laughs> No, I just... I'm a Rafiki. Ah, yes. The past can hurt. Oh, there we go. I like that draw. Here comes the Mana Leak. I also tapped the, the wrong land, too. Oop. All right, I guess to go... I get to go post Mana Leak, Land of Shame. I suppose I could just put Luris in my hand here. Because if they start casting threats, then I'm going to be able to start removing them, and then they have to be worried about me playing Luris. So it's kind of like a shame land. Like, it, it's still one for one, and it made them spend a bunch of mana on a one drop. Like, I, I could have played a threat afterwards that would have gotten through their removal. So, there there was a world in which I was, I was roying them, but, uh... Alright, let's go ahead and take a peek. Reminder not to escalate here against the, uh... It's so brutal. Collective brutality. <laughs> Watch them be like, bolt, bolt, bolt. Remand. Yikes. Alright, well, let's see what we're working with. I'm... I'm okay to go quote-unquote shields down. Uh, what the flip? Alright. Uh, okay, add black, black with this. Damn filter lands. There we go. Ho! Word Doctor. So they got two Pyromancers they're going to try to resolve in one turn. I'm either supposed to take... I'm not taking any of the bolts. I'm supposed to take Of One Mind, Force Negation, or Remand here. I'm not sure which one. Of One Mind is like the easy get. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Two thirds of Ancestral Recall. It's really good. I agree. I'm just saying like, um, it's hard for them to to get to it right now. Like, it, it's risky in the way that giving them mana to let them get to it is bad. So now they've got, they can Pyromancer and have Remand up. But that's not good enough, which is why they're choosing not to do anything. That's a sick draw. We want them to force a negation? I guess. They're gonna remand here, I'm pretty sure. Oh, they're gonna reset the of one mind. Oh, not an island, friend. Yikes. You hate to see it. Force a negation. 
That hurts. <laughs> you love to see it. I I feel for my opponent on that one. All right, so we've got three Coligan's commands in my deck. They've got two lightning bolts in their hand. Just Loris a Bauble here. Yeah, so here's what's going to happen, though. Um, they're going to... They're going to play a young Pyromancer, and then they're going to lightning bolt my Luris. Um, I'm going to be able to seal a fire after... Afterwards. So we're going to get a two for one, and they're going to get a token. So it's going to be a, a three for two, and they're going to have a, a one one elemental token afterwards. Which is fine. Like, this is a fine trade for us. I'm just doing the sort of economics of the, the Luris play here. The fact that they screwed up that Mystic Sanctuary is, like, big game for us. There's a Lightning Bolt. Oh, also Serum Visions. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well played them. So I'm going to kill it now. They're going to Bolt in response, and they're going to get two tokens. So then we get to Inquisition their uh, other Pyromancer. We do have uh, Engineered Explosives to clear out all the tokens if we need to. Not likely to fire it off soon, because I don't want them to know I have it until it's necessary. They're toast. I mean, they're not toast. They have four cards in hand. Like, all the lands in this deck tell me they're supposed to be red and six in this deck, right? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not crazy. This deck is supposed to be playing red and six. I don't know what, what happened in the construction here. Um... This deck has no payoff for the lands. It's got Luris, dude. Like, being able to double spell in the late game... Yeah, exactly. Like, we, But you have Lightning Bolts and Assassin's Trophies. I've watched... I've lost to a Luris Jun deck where they ulted their Renin Six and they were just like, I don't know, let me play three or four trophies every turn. Not every turn, but like three or four trophies over the course of a couple of turns. And it's like, yeah, I, I can't beat that. Okay, so they currently have a Remand in their hand. So, I think I'm just going to pop the Engineer Explosives and do nothing else here. Because I want to cycle this Nurturing Peatland. If I'm only taking one damage here, I'm fine with that. If they cast anything before they hit me, I'm just going to bolt the Sprite Dragon. But it doesn't look like they're going to. The Emblem. No, yeah, that's, dude, when you said there's no payoff, it's like, no, 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 dude, there's spells. There's the good payoff. I mean, don't get me wrong, there's also fetch lands, and, like, putting putting your land count in your deck down very low, I mean, that's what we're using it for in the, um, in the Kinnon deck, and I think it's, uh, fabulous. So. Okay. I think I'm just taking the remand here. I eventually have to deal with this lightning bolt... The Reman is really problematic if I find that Coligan's command. Lightning Bolt is also really bad if we ever find one of our Goyfs. Um, yeah, let's take the Reman. Their hand is opt and Reman, so if they opt and step, I'm just going to bolt this Bright Dragon. Just get it, get it off the table. And then I should have upkeep bolted it, but that's fine. We're going to bolt this now. If they remand it, then uh, this other one is not getting a counter, and we're just going to play it again anyway. So we're gonna, probably going to take one this turn. Okay. So they don't have mana to remand right now, so I'll just kill it. Bye, little friend. Pew! Pew, 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 pew! The downside is uh, they're playing both uh, of one minds, and then in game one they had uh, Archmage's Charms. So if they start drawing uh, draw twos, and then they're able to Mystic Sanctuary to reset them, like like fetch lands start becoming like draw twos, which is less than great. But we have a lot of good draws in our deck. 
I guess this is a specific matchup too. I was mentioning earlier, like uh, I don't like playing this deck without Ren and Six, but this is a specific matchup where Ren and Six is absolutely like busted in half. So obviously we're missing it here. Yeah, go ahead, friend. Enjoy that dog walk. Get that walk, dog. So I'm going to th throw a stop on my opponent's upkeep here. If they reveal something, Lightning Bolt. Uh, that's fine. So I think they still have the Remand in their hand. Or is their hand just two Bolts? It's just two Bolts. So I'm going to just kill this now. Hand is double bolt, so we really want call against command or that's a big boy. Hello, name's Bruce. That's all right, I understand. <laughs> Why well, trust a time ago, if right? Gotta get your voice down nice and low for your Australian shark accent. Oh no. Ooh. That's a good one. Uh, okay. Well, good thing I drew this for us, but uh, yikes. So my opponent's deck was in the 5 0 deck dump as well. Um, oh my god, that's so good. Okay. Uh, and they have two bolts in their hand right now. So if I attack, they're gonna be able to go bolt, bolt, generate two tokens, uh, double block or block the goif. So not great. Um, think I would rather get rid of this during their upkeep. Force them to spend their mana on their turn. Fatal push off the top was a really clutch draw. The fact that the uh, Blood Moon came up so late in this game is really lucky for us. Yep, yep, yep. I think they're just bolting me? Yeah, they are. Smart opponent. Clever girl. The real question is going to be if they have um, Archmage's Charm still in their deck. I'm hoping that they do so they can blank some draws. I don't think we have a second swamp, so I don't think we can ever escape any Croxes, but that's a good draw. All right. Uh, crack you for specs. Tarmoglyph. Tarmoglyph. Why trust a guy, hey? Okay, pass turn. So if we pick up a lure, or if we ever draw one of our Coligan's commands, we're gonna be happy campers. All right, basically dead. They're attacking? Yeah, no, no way. No way on earth, friend. Okay, that feels good. So attack. <laughs> Picking up Luris is currently irrelevant because I can't cast it, so I think I think I'm just gonna hold this until we can just kill one of their creatures with it. As Kent Brockman says, and I for one welcome our new insect overlords. I love that quote. I really do. 
like to like to let them know that as a trusted TV personality, I can be used to help to recruit people to toil away in their underground sugar caves. Well, that's a draw. I don't know, cracky for thick. Boosh. All right, let's see if we can just end this here. Uh, target player discards a card and deals two damage. Uh, that one. Smash. What do you got? Show me all secrets. Nope. One of my favorite, like, mini Kent Brockman quotes. It's like, it's not even a quote. Um, like, it is, it, there is a quote. Um, but, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, Yeah, so um, when they cut to Kent Brockman reporting on the um, Freddy Quimby trial, it starts with Ackman just outside the county courtroom where an argument about chowder has spilled over into the biggest trial in Springfield history. Behind these doors, a federal judge will ladle out steaming bowls of rich, creamy justice in a case the media have dubbed Beat Up Waiter. This reporter suggested Waitergate but was shouted down at the press club. Now it's illegal to videotape court proceedings in the state, so we'll have to be quiet. But it's just such a funny, um, like, real thing that happens with live reporting sometimes, live television in general, is that like they cut to someone and it's sort of, they started talking before the, 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 the actual cut happened, so you he, he, he clearly meant to say Brockman, but all you got was Ackman live. Oh, that's a nice Arbor Elf you've got, opponent. Be a shame if it died to a seal of fire. Like a damn dirty merfolk. Look at this merfolk. Huh? See that merfolk? He's the one fire. So on fire. Wow. Um. Yeah. I feel like I'm supposed to just Thoughtseize here. <laughs> I think what I'm going to do is get a basic... Oh, gosh, I want a basic swamp, but I think I'm going to get a basic forest... Even though that's crappy if a um, Croxa shows up. Because if I get Blood Moon... Oh, they'll lose the um, Utopia Sprawl off their land. So they're likely not going to Blood Moon or Megas of the Moon me this turn. If they do have a Seal of Fire on backup. Most of these decks are playing playing Megas right now. No, I, ju I just want to resolve this Dark Confidant. Because I don't care about Megas. I've got a Seal of Fire. Okay, I'm glad, glad I talked myself through that. Okay. Uh, probably should have just Shocked one of the lands, but... We'll just uh, shock this over too. It's probably not going to make too much of a difference. I just want to play the Star Confidant because if they have removal versus if they have um, something they want to add to the board, they're going to be in an awkward place here unless it's like Stomp. <sighs> Cast Stomp. Now casting this Thoughtseize is pretty unappealing. But we have Coligan's commands for afterwards. So we might just be putting Luris in my hand here. Uh, none, of, none of the rest of this is super great with this start from them. I don't really need to worry too much. You have three mana now, but we've got uh, access to the Seal of Fire, so... Not worried about that. Ken Brockman consistently has some of the uh, best lines in all of uh, the classic Simpsons. Um, what's the other one? I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Democracy simply doesn't work.
seasoned pyromancer. You get it. Uh, also, yeah, yeah, I know I'm on, but I don't care. Joblessness is no longer for philosophy majors. Useful people are starting to feel the pinch. <laughs> Sir, what experience do you have? Two years of jazz tap and three years of modern dance. Apparently, apparently Barney is a dancer. You know, Luris, a seal of fire, loop. Gonna poke this pyromancer. Donk. Make us in the moon. Pillage! Ooh. The savagery. I don't like that. Although I'm going to gain three lives, so I really don't care. That's fine. And play... Or, yeah, and play my Dark Confidant. Okay. <laughs> I want to be upset, but I'm just not. Ooh, hoo -hoo, their hand sucks. Okay, so... They've got a Glory Banger... A glory banger, and I can't attack. Shoot, because I had to seal of fire one of their tokens if I wanted to do that. And they do have this bone crusher still available. So they're gonna play bone crusher and uh, the elf probably this turn. This is it's a bit of a problem with this list too. I swear, if we flip, I was gonna be like, if we flip a Coligan's command there, I was gonna be upset. For some reason, they didn't play their Arbor Elf there. No idea why. Feels like it would have been really smart because it would have made me want to deal with it. Um, I think we're gonna play Inquisition and two Seal of Fires. So we'll just take the Elf out of their hand. They've got double Glory Bear, but we can beat that with. Uh, with extra seal of fires and Colgan's commands. So while we are in a defensive position here, we're in a good defensive position here. If they miss their land drop, we're good. If they play something like Clothis, I'm not super happy about it, but <sighs> definitely can't attack until next turn. <sighs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess they had to draw one eventually. Block Bone Crusher, shoot Bone Crusher. I think that's where I'm at. So then next turn. Yeah. So their hand is two Glory Bringers, so um, we can go after their. Um, we can pick up Luris and make them discard one of their Glory Bringers at the end of next turn, or we can shock Glory Bringer, pick up our. Luris and Seal of Fire, the Glory Bringer, so it doesn't get to uh, crack in on us. Obviously, these two elementals are going to be a bit of a problem, but could be a lot worse here. A lot, a lot worse. Okay, so here comes the first Glory Bringer. Actually, we can kill one and make them discard the other right now, and then on our turn, pick up Luris, shoot a token, and play the Luris. Alternatively, we could draw a step kick on them. So uh, this resolves... Go uh, return target creature and shock. No. Yes? No. Yes? No. Target player discards a card and shock. You discard. Shock that. Pew. See you. Whoa, Doctor. What a turn of events here from the gun side of things. Scrapping it out here against the green red Panza deck. I think I want to go draw step, discard, get back my Luris. Let me get a 3-2 lifelink. 
that one, that one. Bonk. Blood braid. Blood braid. Blood braid. You drew a blood braid elf. They drew a clothis. Damn, it feels good to be a gangster. All right, we're hoping we draw a land or a Mishra's bauble, the bauble of Mishra, brother to Urza. I'd like to draw an Urza's bauble, but that's not legal in this format. So you're gonna have to make do. I don't actually want to draw an Urza's bauble. That is one of the worst possible draws, but I'll take it. Question is, what am I doing with my Luris cast this turn? Is it nothing? I think it's nothing. I think we're just gonna draw step KCOM them again. Because the risk of them picking up something like Bloodbraid Elf or whatnot are really high and and really bad. Oh no, Pyromancer? Yeah. That's fair. Okay. You got more dudes. So target player discards a card and shock? Yeah. No. Oh my god. Oh. <sighs> yeah. Yikes. Yikes, 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 yikes. Just dead. <sighs> they had such a bad draw into such a medium one. That season pyromancer they got eventually was was gasoline. This is such a hard matchup to sideboard for. No, again, we 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 had three scavenging ooze in our deck, and they just didn't didn't come up right like. I think we have a totally reasonable setup, a uh, reasonable, yeah, totally reasonable setup for this matchup that just didn't come together. So we get to board slightly differently, but I th think, largely speaking, we're right where we want to be. Just have to be a little more conscious of Blood Moon here. I don't know if I want Nature's Claim because this is a four Assassin's Trophy deck, so pretty happy not to budge on that number, but just hang out. A large bear-like animal, most likely a bear, has wandered down from the hills in search of food or perhaps employment. All right. Zero lander. Four lands. Happy to throw back the blood crypt here. I'm assuming they kept their seven. Yes, they did. It's going to be a tough one. So I've got turn two kitchen thanks. I can't deal with anything in their hand right now, but I think the most dangerous thing by far is the blood braid elf or the kitchen thanks. We're gonna get to have a dark confidant hang out for a turn. I think the blood braid elf is by far the most dangerous. Turn they play the scavenging use, they'll be able to eat. Eat my Mishra's bobble, but that's fine. Should have bobbled them first, by the way. Uh, you want to bobble your opponent first so you know what's on top of their deck, so that you have the maximum amount of information when you're choosing what to remove from their hand. So my hand's not getting any better, but... So 
So they're going to play Scavenging Ooze or one of their Kitchen Finks this turn. We'll get to Inquisition the other one next turn, so don't really need to worry about that. Of course they top deck a Lightning Bolt. Of course. How could they not? Okay, well... At least my scavenging ooze gets to fight for scraps with their scavenging ooze. Um, I want to get a forest here. It's because I don't want to overspend on... Oh, but we've got um, Twilight Mire. So it gives me a lot of access to green mana. So I can actually get... Yeah, because I can filter green through the mire to cast a Croxa. So we'll filter from black to double green here. Play the Scoos. We're going to eat uh, their Blood Bright Elf. Okay. So the hand we thought sees didn't have any more mana at this point. And one of their draws was Lightning Bolt. So there's a chance they have no more mana. Uh, they do have two Kitchen Finks in their hand, so I can't imagine them using this Scooze unless they had another mana source to cast one of these Sphinx. We're not blocking that. Yeah, okay. So... Put this down, but what we're going to do here is Inquisition them. Make them discard the Kitchen Fangs. Then we're going to use this to add green, green. We use Scavenging Ooze to eat the Kitchen Fangs. They might try to eat in response, and we'll eat it in response to that. They can't win here. I have more green mana than they have access to. The question is, do I want to attack here? Um, they're very likely to play a Kitchen Finks next turn. Attack me for three. I'm okay with that. And they're not going to block my Scavenging Ooze with their Kitchen Finks because I'll just eat it in response to their um, Persist trigger. So we'll see how clever my opponent is on this one. But I'm still pretty glad I took away that Blood Braid Elf because as soon as they have the opportunity to cast it, it is... One of the more threatening cards in their deck. We're really hoping we can get a Scavenging Ooze up and above. Yeah, up and above. Um... Okay. So no, at least one of the last cards in their hand is Glorybringer. We really want to get the Skews on five before, before this happens to it. My poor lad. Before it gets banged for glory. But we're not looking to be in good shape here. Blood Crypt, Overgrown Tomb, Stamping Ground. Stamping Ground's fine. That's another Glory Bringer on top? All right. So they're not going to be able to attack us. Or, sorry, they're not going to be able to cast the Glory Bringers. We're looking for... What am I looking for here? I don't know. Am I looking for that? No. I was supposed to play this Black Leaf Cliffs, and I was supposed to put Loras in my hand. Gosh darn it. Oh my god. Sure. Okay. Sure. Oh, I wish Obosh was still the the definitive Grawl deck. I liked playing against that one way better. I Blood Braid Elf is tough. Oh. They chose to play Stomp. I guess they're looking for an Alpha Strike in the future. 
they're just not going to attack this turn. That seems incredibly... They have to attack, right? No, okay. Like, I know they don't have to. Jesus. So, we have the entirely land-free draw into this one. Okay. Okay. They're going to have their land now, their fifth land. Just eat me here. This casting Bone Crusher Giant. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to eat one of my baubles. Continue to not attack, I assume. Putting me to one seems like a reasonable choice. Like, what if I had boarded in something like Anger of the Gods? It would literally kill their entire board here. And maybe it's just so unlikely because I'm playing a Luris deck. And again, getting used to the pattern of like having to put Luris in my hand is has been a problem here. Yeah, we're just dead to the Glorybringer no matter what we do. They played that quite well, and uh, it seems like that's an atrocious matchup for... I don't know about the Luris Gen deck, but at least this version of Luris Gen deck with no... No Ren and Six, and maybe it was the bad draw. I don't know. Certainly wasn't a great one. Okay, against Ike Spike. Okay. Okay, um, so we're going to get a tap land with this. Overgrown Tomb or Stamping Grounds. Not sure which. Tomb, Black Leaf Cliffs, so and we got Twilight Mire on three if we need it. Looks like we're against another Grawl deck, which is rough. Let's 
see if we can stall their development. If they have a blood moon this turn, it makes the moon. That's going to be less than great for us. God, every time. <sighs> okay, so Black Cleave Cliffs. I don't have an extra green mana for Scoos. So. Second Dark Confidant. Hope they don't have Chandra. I guess. I suppose if they play Chandra, we get to Coligan's Command, kill it, and pick a Dark Back Confidant back up. So maybe that's all right. Consistently feeling like Dark Confidant today is really not good in this. Good lord. Yeah, not not good in this setup. It was when Luris was infinitely more castable, or maybe it's just it felt like it was when you had other things like Ren and Six, but uh oh, okay. Well, probably no matter what we play, we get annihilated by Glorybringer here. But I think our best bet is Scavenging Ooze, make this a 4-4. Four, four. Hope for the best. Glorybringer or Chandra wreck us here. don't have any mana here, so I think we go Colgan's Command, you discard, kill your Pyromancer. Then we're going to eat it. Eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it. Get ourselves an egg and beat it. Discard that card now. Stone Rain. Interesting. Okay, I got a 5-5, five, five, go. Oh, for the love of Flip. Yeah. So now I gotta do this. I do have a basic forest in my deck, and actually since they could be playing main deck um, Blood Moon, and our main deck way to remove the Blood Moon is Assassin's Trophy, this isn't actually the end of the world. But it's still frustrating that they had even more to do still when they are already... So very far ahead. Uh, I don't know if they're actually far ahead, but it, it just feels like it. Maybe because we just got uh, beat in a series of two by <laughs> by Grawl on some pretty weak draws, and they still managed to uh, pull it out. All right. Um, I can trade my Scoos for their Scoos plus another one of their creatures and then play a Tarmogoyf and grab my Luris. Pretty incentivized to do that, so I'm going to... Somebody call up Benny Goodman, because it's a little time for some swing, swing, swing. Do 
They're gonna make they're gonna be able to make my Tarmogoyf very sad, which is fairly frustrating. Another land. <laughs> oh, my Tarmogoy's now one, two. Womp womp. Yeah. <laughs> this is the downside of playing um, eight one mana discard effects. And I don't think I've seen any love of flip. Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen a Jun deck that was doing so. Uh, sometimes the uh, sometimes the Death Shadows decks would do that, but not so much the uh, the Jun deck. So I'm, I'm confused on the construction on this one. Maybe the player who who got the five zero with this one just got a little bit lucky because a lot of the construction of this seem a bit suspect. I'm wondering if I should. Swing with the tower guy for next turn because I, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. They have five green mana, and I have one, two, three, four. So, no, I don't want that tower guy to go. Oh, no. Okay, that's fine. Well, not fine, but <laughs> we're not in much of a worse spot than we were before. So. Let's. Not the best pickup, but I'll take it. This skews being one bigger than theirs is a pretty massive deal. What's on top? Are we going to lose? Yeah, 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 I know. This time it's actually important for them to do that, so not as annoyed as I would otherwise be. Can I please resolve my freaking bobble? What did they have? Wood of Foothills? Sick. I think I meant mountain. They have a mountain on top of their deck. We drew another bobble. Womp womp. Wheel. So if I want to trade my Luris for their Scoos now, I can. So let's go ahead and do that. Shoot, I needed to play this Yellow Fire before combat if I wanted to do that. So we're not going to do that. Another land, thank goodness. The Jund gods are being good to us today. Yeah, yeah. It's not even my main phase, it's fine. Harbor Elf, perfect. Not great. Pretty good. Pretty phenomenal. Thank you, deck. That is... Just, just fantastic. Oh, and here comes the ambulance. Uh, yeah, we just do it this way. Yeah, we just do it this way. So they can remove both the seal of fires here, unfortunately, but yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they'll be able to remove the lightning bolt as well. But then my skews gets to eat their skews, so it's all it's all good. Well, actually, if they use their Arbor Elf here for another green mana, I think they just lose. So 
Yeah. Pretty good. So I'm going to attack with my team. I'm not removing the um, scavenging ooze until, um, until after combat because um, my, my Tarmogoyf was going through for damage there. That's a little thing, but it, it could matter. And I knew the top of their deck was Arbor Elf, so we win. They, they can't survive with that. The thing that's stopping me... Oof, excuse me. The thing that's stopping me want to board in the Nature's Claims is um, not the fact that they don't have enchantments, because they do, but it's the fact that the enchantments are low cost like utopia sprawl high impact like blood moon where we may not be able to catch the cast the nature's claim afterwards anyway or cloth is who's indestructible so i don't know if, if i want that here i definitely wouldn't mind less less discard it's just a grotesque amount of discard feels like there should be more removal but there's four trophies so maybe that's maybe that's a little nutty too Judging how I'm feeling, yeah, I don't think I'm going to get to that other league tonight. I just, there's no way. This has been... I haven't seen a Crocs in forever. Get one command out of here. Yeah, it seems fine. Okay. Still got my kitty cat. Okay. Arbor Elf. Sure hope that's ready for a seal of fire. Oops. Get out of here, nerd. Sorry. Okay, so it is a it's like a medium sized tempo loss to okay I, I want to play the goif this turn on the open board the fact that they yeah that's what we're gonna do uh, no step on snack that's what I was just about to explain so we're gonna go Inquisition uh, with a basic swamp because this way we don't have to take their Blood Moon if they have one. We have nothing that is double cost other than Croxa. If they have something like Stone Rain, we can sort of insulate ourselves from that. If they have something like Clothis, we can deal with that. If they have something like Anger of the Gods, we can deal with that. So Clothis go away. And currently, Tarmogoyf's going to be fatty. 
and neither Anger of the Gods nor Boom Crusher is going to be able to deal with them. And even if they top deck a Blood Moon, they can't get me off of my... Okay. Uh, they can't get me off of my uh, colors. They very proactively stamped me there. So that's fun. I feel like IOK gets a lot worse after turn three. Agreed. Agreed. That's uh, also worth pointing out, which I did not. Uh, I'm going to play this ta tapped stamping grounds. Uh, no, I need green mana. I don't know why I thought I had green mana. And now I also can't put my Luris in my hand. This is what happens when I'm under the weather and playing. Yikes. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Come on, you didn't. Oh, man. All right. Well, at least it's only a lightning bolt. Glad you got to uh, join for that colossal meltdown, no step on snack. Yeah, obviously it could be worse. I mean, they could blood moon me and I could have no out for it. We still get to go goif goif next turn, which is great. So, And we know they have an anger of the gods in their hand still, which is only going to kill their bone crusher. So I am A-OK -okay with this. But obviously having the goif there would have been A++. plus plus. We would have been up for life. It's funny, in multiple of our previous uh, games slash match... Oh my god, Relic. <laughs> How is my opponent drawing such, like, perfect, insane gasoline? This is so not cool. Yeah, so we're definitely blocking here because um, they can Relic and just wipe out the graveyards. So... Uh, and then they could anger after that, I guess. We're going to force them to do it now. They don't have the uh, mana to anger, so maybe our Goyf gets to uh, get big enough to dodge the anger. This is currently a boltable Goyf. Stop. It's a stompable Goyf. That is so rude. Luckily, we drew Dark Confidant. What is up, Pensuer? I believe there's a single mountain here. Cool. So we're going to get to play Dark Confidant and put Luris in my hand. So all is not lost yet. Okay, that's fine. I've got all my colors. Are you blocking? I don't think so. Oh, I can't cast this Luris, which means I can't cast the Tarmogoyf. I can now do, do the things that I said I couldn't do. And I revealed the Nurturing Peatland because I am a, I'm a boss-ass bee. Get out of here, Blood Moon. can now play Luris, but I can't. I have, to, I have to take one for it, which means I have to block. So. Definitely in trouble, but blocking with Dark Confidant is like kind of free, and I don't really want it now anyway, because I could flip a Coligan's Command. We're just really hoping they'd ever draw a Glorybringer. Glorybringer! Oh, they finally play the Anger. Right. Right! They had that forever. And I was playing around but around it before until I basically got to a point where I couldn't... Good lord! That's a yikes from me, dog. Alright. I don't know what I could possibly draw to get out of this. But that's not bad. Uh, that... That's really not bad at all. So... Whatever they target with their cloth is, we're just going to eat it in response. What do you want? Show me your target. Okay. Now 
Now the awkward part is going to be. <sighs> That's a really good draw. Actually, is it? It's okay. It's not that good. We're going to have a hefty scoos. So. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're we are going to do that. Um, we're going to do that on the next turn, unfortunately, because I. I can't really afford to shock in this green. That's actually not all that useful right now. So, Bolt the Kitchen Fanks is going to go to the graveyard. We can respond to the Persist trigger by removing it from the game, which means uh, that the Persist trigger now has nothing to find and cannot do so. Um... Do I eat? Yeah, but I can make my Scoos a 5-5 five, five here. I can take two points from Clothis this turn, depending on what they target. So here's the thing. If they target one of the Goyfs, uh, everything's easy. If they don't target a Goyf, uh, it's less good for me. But, um... okay, that's perfect. So, or sorry, if they target the Goyce, it was it was easy mode. I'm just not going to deal with this. If they had drawn a lightning bolt there, we'd be dead, but, or a glory bringer. Yeah, so we're dead here anyway, so it didn't matter. Uh, but I could have made my Scoos a 5-5 there. No, if, if they had targeted one of the Goyfs, I would have been at 5 there with a 5-5 five, five Scoos. But it still would have died to the Giant. I'd still have to find a way to deal with Glorybringer, which I really don't have. So, yeah. No, they, they just played that very much correctly. And, uh, and they had what they needed to beat me. Having the Nature's Claim in this matchup is super meh, but... I think this deck is not built super well, even though it did 5-0. I think I should run the fourth Thoughtseize. Yeah, maybe. Let's see if Moto lets me get it. I'm definitely not on my A game tonight, so I wouldn't be... Whoa, okay. I wouldn't be surprised if like a bunch of the decisions I was making are suspect tonight. Wider. And I should. Okay, there we go. Okay, here's my cat. Yeah. Yeah, but the, the problem with using Thoughtseize as an answer for Glorybringer is it's like. That's such a roll of the dice, I, I feel like. And maybe that's what you're supposed to do. It just it feels really crappy to me. Um, so this is black on turn one. And this can be black on turn two, which gives us a basic swamp. Do I want a basic swamp? No, I'd probably rather have a basic forest. No, we're just going to have to be in a position where we can float. Man, I've been playing Luris and Jund. Definitely not playing Lily feels bad. Yeah, I, this is this is sort of an experiment for for the meta, right? So I'm here like trying to run the the two the two decks back to back, but I think because I'm not feeling great today, I'm just going to end after the Luris one and uh anyone who okay. So we can have the mana ready for trophy on the Blood Moon. Alternatively, we could trophy the the land with the sprawl on it. Yeah. Or rather, it's good to experiment with the old stuff in a new metagame, right? Because, like, Luris has been adjusted, right? Luris, Luris got hit with the nerf bat. So we get to find out how, how impactful that was. So Sprawl is out. Verdant Catacombs is out. They have Bolt, Blood Moon. That. Yeah, I think I just have to let them resolve the Blood Moon and then trophy it here. I'm just going to play this Copper Language. Both need to be tinkered with. Yeah, yeah, I mean, so I think this Luris deck is not the best way to play Luris right now. I'd really want to play it with uh, Ren and Six, which I didn't realize when I grabbed this deck list that it didn't have. And then by the time it was getting to the point where I was going to stream, I was like, ah, I'm not going to change it. I'm just going to leave it as is. 
So we are opening ourselves up to top decked um, glory bringers next turn because we're going to accelerate them by one. But so we're really hoping to have a nature's claim here, but we don't. So got to do it this way. Yeah, I know Aspiring Spike has been playing a bunch of um, a bunch of classic Jund. Okay, so let's go Kroxa, and then if we get lucky enough along the way here, we're going to be able to put a 6-6 six, six Kroxa into play. Not next turn, but like the turn after, because they're going to bolt my Dark Confidant, and then, of course, they found a Blood Braid into Relic. All right. There is so much Grawl in the queue right now. So much Grawl in the queues and in the competitive tournament, too. Yeah, but I hate Bloodbraid Elf, so I'm actually really happy not to be playing Blood Bloodbraid Elf, if that matters. Um, whether or not it's ever been the right choice to play Bloodbraid Elf, I don't really care because it, it just I just don't care for the card. But... We gotta eat our own Croxa here because they've got the relics, so they're just gonna wipe us out anyway. And I need a four-four Croxa to, sorry, a four-four scavenging use to survive their lightning bolt and or trade with their blood raid elf. Um, yeah, the the bigger Jun deck certainly seems like it's the right place to be now. I'm just not happy about it because I really like the Luris Jun deck. I'm happy to give or get the two for one here. This damn girl deck, though, it's so freaking good. All right, well, we got their bolt. So maybe this Dark Confidant gets to do something here. I also get to play Luris in my hand. Girl is super well positioned. I, I disagree with that entirely. Just just on a personal preference, I would rather fight through T Tron and Titan. I love playing against Tron and Titan with uh, a lot of the decks that I enjoy, which are the sort of blue soup control decks. I think playing against Tron and Titan is some very fun magic, whereas like playing against the Grawl deck, it's like, if they're on the play, it's just so obnoxious. Because with Tron, it's really easy to, like, almost every time Force of Negation, if you're playing that, is all you need. They don't have Double Red for Glory Banger here. Oh, they do. They do. Of course they do. Never never didn't have it. Um, anger. Interesting. What is this? Ah, of course. But what do you like playing No Step on Snack? Green, black, X. Yep, yep, yep. That is, yeah, well, that's one of your worst possible matchups, right? And it's, like, not in an interesting way at all. Like, it's just god-awful. That's a good draw for us. Unfortunately... Luris getting stonewalled by the Kitchen Finx is less than great, but we get to cycle this. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. All right, we're going to draw a step, Coligan's Command, kill the Kitchen Finks, make them discard their card, and then... I can't eat the Kitchen Finks! Why do I keep thinking I have a Scavenging Use? I keep thinking I have a Scavenging Use. I'm still going to draw a step, K-Command them. It's just nowhere near as good as it was in my brain. Hey, you, in that. We've got Bolt for the Kitchen Finks when this comes back. Sorcery Speeds. Oh, come on. For the love of Flip. <laughs> oh. God. See, in this Thoughtseize, I'm like, I'm, I'm, again, I'm kind of glad I didn't bring in the other Thoughtseize because, like, their deck is full of haste threats. So now that we're in this stupid top decking war that I can't seem to win with Jund because we're playing the wrong Jund deck, um, it's just, like, 
there's so much stuff they can top deck that's just impossible to beat, and we can't thought seize it ever. Uh, if they just resolve a Clothis, we're in big trouble. Glorybringer, huge trouble. Like, yeah, this is definitely less less uh, less good against um, less good against Grawl than actual Jund would be. It's just frustrating because I liked the previous Luris deck so much. But I, I think what I need to do is check actually what the previous Luris deck list looked like because it didn't look like this. This is this is not correct. Um, we're hoping they don't just have some crazy Haymaker off the top here. Although if they have Glorybringer here, we're actually going to get to Croxa the next turn. So yeah, okay. So we might might be able to steal this one. They can swing here if they want to. Because I will take it. Picked up Devoted to beat on big mana decks. Yeah, that's certainly a way to go, to go about it. Devoted uh, Devoted Devastation is definitely a reasonable choice against those decks. Um, I, I don't like that deck either. I don't like playing creature combo. I, they, that's not entirely true. Like, Kiki is fun, and I had a reasonable amount of fun playing, like, the green-white... Um, uh, Zerda um, Heliod deck. Okay, we're going to swing with Bob here because I don't mind Bob dying at this point. Opponent's willing to take it. Weird. What What are they playing then? Or just they they just not paying attention? They are a little tilted. They They went off and chat on me. But that's fine. I'm not fast. So they were going to take 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That was going to do it. Oh, no, we were just going to get through because we just removed it. All right, so we're at 2 and 2. Looking for that Gen 5 0. Looking for that Gen 5 0. It's not a fun deck to play. It's kind of boring and linear. I play it when I want to win. But going turn three, four, I win is still boring AF. Yeah, I mean that's the I hate I hate like it's weird because some people are like, oh no no no, it's so nice to play against combos that are just like deterministically you win. Um, but I kind of disagree. My my go to is uh, Urza Thopter Sword or any, any like the fair Urza decks are like my top tier. Uh, mixed with like the blue soup multicolor deck so like there's one that's called iceberg or B black blue red green is the the combination of colors i just love playing like the cryptic command mystic sanctuary loop decks um because i think they have reasonable game against the whole whole format and i get to complain that they don't have a great uh burn matchup with post warm lunge the deck can go off even through removal it's absurd yeah i agree it's it's a really tricky deck to play against but I find playing against it with like the blue soup decks is usually really rewarding because you have to cover a lot of angles. Whereas like something like ad nauseum is so clunky and slow that it's like, yeah, you have to cover like two to three angles, but it's not as hard. Whereas like devoted devastation is like they search their deck, they use their graveyard, they play stuff out of their hand and they have like sometimes a pretty reasonable mid range plan too, where they just like play a couple of beaters that aren't combo pieces. No spike inglés. We got a Goblin Guide. We've uh, spotted a Goblin Guide, Goblin Guide on 4th and Main. Okay. That's kind of great. So we get to play Seal of Fire here. Pass the turn. We're going to have the Tarmogoyf next turn. Sideboard's in 4 Veils and Laughs. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the nice thing about playing Iceberg is you have access to things like Lightning Bolt. And red and six against the creature decks. Okay, perfect. I think Veil needs to be banned. What, in modern? It's fine. If it was banned, I wouldn't be particularly upset about it. So maybe they should, but I don't think it needs to be banned. I don't think Veil is showing up in a disproportionate way 
and affecting the metagame in, in an awful way. It, it is one of the worst feelings in the world to get veiled, but um, I'm pretty sure there are people who for whom the worst thing in the world is getting hit with, um, uh, what is it called? Uh, cryptic Command for counter draw, so... Fail helps the big man index too much against blue. Uh, yeah, I guess I can agree with that. Certainly, Green Tron, <laughs> Green Tron with Veil is a beating. Um, I guess I just go KCOM Shock Discard. It's probably the best thing to do here. And then next turn, I get to play two creatures. So let's do that. He's got a skull crack. Whew. It's not really good against scavenging is. Fun fact, Titan Scape Shift, etc. need to be held in check by blue control. Ah, uh, and burn, right? Burn tends to eat up those decks by a reasonable chunk. I would I would hazard a guess. I'm no scientist, but Man, they're going ham here. They discard Foothills, so they must have one more burn spell. I don't know why they felt like they needed to fire everything off in response there then. Okay, so we are going to attack for four. Am I attacking here? I'm not. What I am going to do is get a basic, get my Luris. It, it does feel crappy to go to eight because if they have double Boros Charm, you can attack. While I can attack, like I'm not, you have trophy up. Yeah, but I'm going to use trophy to take out this land. I'm going to use Trophy to take out the land and then uh, put my Luris in my hand here. Because if I can cut them off of their white mana, uh, I can lock out a bunch of spells. And they're such a low land count deck that it's... I should have done this in main phase one so I had myself the option of attacking. But I'm just, I'm low enough and I don't have a scavenging ooze to play right now that I, I don't really feel good about... Um, about attacking because right now any life that I lose is 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 permanent, right? Okay. I give them the landfall trigger for that. That's my fault. I feel like they have an they have inevitability in the match. They will draw three burn spells. I know they will, but I don't want them. Like I'm at two now, right? And if they had drawn a haste creature there, like another goblin guide, we could have died. The, the thing is, I would be happy to race if I had had them lower than 19. But as they were at 19 and I was at 8 or 9 when I fetched, uh, I didn't feel like that was worth doing. What I should have done with that turn instead, which I forgot that I could do, is just escape Croxa. But I didn't. Um, so, boo on me. So, some number of these should go out. All of these should probably go out. And then probably one of those. Oh, and some of these. Jesus. This is like, this is the thing about this build. This is so gratuitous. And you have like no ability to gain life in the deck. I mean, there's this scavenging uses, right? But they're not, they're not good enough here. In this kind of matchup. I, I really don't know how the person who 5 0 with this did so. <sighs> They must have just had the most incredible line of matchups. EE e. seems good. I, I never like it against Burn. I find that it's too slow to stop their one drops from doing a significant amount of damage. As a one of yeah, I, yeah. I just I've been disappointed by it as one of so many times. I guess it's probably better than something that is in the configuration right now. 
Okay, so we can go Blood Crypt, Copper Line, Tarmogoyf here. Uh, or Blood Crypt, Fetch, Basic. If I'm fetching a Basic, I want to not get Forest. I don't really want to get... I guess getting a Mountain is better. His hand is, like, not great. But it's got a redraw. I don't know. Pray for no Searing Blaze. I mean, they didn't kill my Tarmogoy with the Searing Blaze last game, and it killed me anyway. So, okay, so we already drew the extra land, which means, holy crap. <laughs> I, yeah, uh, there's only one... There's only one freaking forest in this deck, so I have to fetch Shock to play this Tarmogoyf with the with the fetch in the graveyard. But it's worth doing because they have a Goblin Guide in play, and this is an unboltable Goyf once I do this. God. This deck just not having it today. Just, nah. Nah, we're not winning any of this. Sorry, friend. Just, nope. Not gonna, not gonna do it. Hopefully they do something goofy here, like Helix, my Tarmogoyf. Come on, opponent. Oh, freaking Eidolon. Good lord. That's that's the hand that I bought in for. I just didn't think we would draw nothing but lands. Our bobble redraw was our land. Our turn two draw was a land. Our turn three draw was a land. So all three cards are drawn this game. All lands. We started out with two spells. And we... We, we haven't increased that number at all. The only one we did was we, we put a Luris in our hand. So. Luris feels bad with the Eidolon. Agreed. I'm hoping they're considering attacking for some reason because I'm definitely happy to block the Eidolon. Of course not. They're going to double burn my Goyf at some point. Well, that's an A++ draw. So, bless a Meyer. Get the... Yeah, the, yeah that. Bolt the Eidolon. This gets big. He's a fatty. I don't have double black. Man, I'm so good at this game. God damn. I, I have not screwed up mana so badly as I did tonight in so long. I just, it's like It feels like every game I've screwed up my colors like that. I don't know how or why. I don't know. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm definitely going to call it after this one. probably just it. they have four cards in hand I, I don't you know what i don't even care I don't, I don't even care it's fine my bad folks we just completely punted everything repeatedly this league so just uh just not having it uh so yeah luris jund uh i don't think this is the build for it at all. Do I still have the other one? The is, it is, it is imperative, imperative that we crush the, the players players before the start of the rainy season. season. And, and remember, remember, 
A shiny new donkey for whoever brings me the head of Colonel Montoya. Well, thanks for the follow there, uh, No Step on Snack. Uh, you can check out my YouTube below the uh, video here. Um, I promise I'm usually better at, at, at playing than this. So let's talk about this deck. So I think you should be down at least one Thoughtseize and maybe one Inquisition, but probably one Thoughtseize. Probably up. So, yeah. I don't know if you want any of these Dark Confidants. Maybe some number nowadays. I'm not sure. Um, uh, Ren and Six. Definitely should be in this deck. I want to say two or three. So let's go ahead, add four, then remove one. Um, probably go down one trophy, one Cole against Command, maybe even two Cole against Command in the main deck, and add one to the sideboard. Um, hello? Uh, I think Bob's a two of it most Ren and Six pump, pump, Punks Bob. Exactly. Like it. Bob barely was ever relevant until the point where he was killing us. Like, it was really bad most of the time. Um, yo, 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 play more Niv. Uh, do I have it in me to do the classic Jund deck? I think I do. I think this was so god-awful, I need a Redemption League. So we're going to take a few minute break here. Um, this configuration is way closer to what I would want to try if I was going to play this again. I think you get a third Lightning Bolt in there and... Um, go with this or maybe a fatal push or two. Although, yeah, it's how you learn to watch mana. Well, no, but that's what I'm talking about. Like, I'm usually fine, and I completely punted, like, like a bunch of different times where it's like, okay, let me play my turn out. Oh, wait, I don't have double black, or I don't have a second red, or I don't have... Like, usually I'm reasonable at planning out those things, but I, I was not. So, definitely... Definitely was a lot of slops in this league, but I think this deck was misbuilt. I think this is a lot closer to what you want to do, and you've got four slots here. Um, probably add another... Oh, add, add a cycle land, I would assume. Get the land count up, because you're adding Ren sixes in here. And then you have a lot more grind, so maybe with the higher land count plus the Ren sixes, you want the Coligans command in here, because... So, let's get back to my original hypothesis. The reason I was thinking that Jund was going to be one of the best Luris decks post- companion change is because the Luris decks are now a lot more mana hungry than they were before because you can't just play Luris on three uh, as soon as you have three mana and put the bobble in you have to spend the three mana on a turn where ideally you don't want to only be doing that so on four you can get your Luris out of your uh, sideboard and play a one mana spell on five mana you can get your Luris out of your sideboard and play a two mana spell and then the next turn you're going to play able to play the Luris plus a one or two mana um, permanent so the deck is no longer as sort of, I don't know, lean or you can't, um, yeah, yeah, a trophy down for a Maelstrom Pulse or a, a Abrupt Decay would probably be fine. You can, you can move it to the sideboard. This means the sideboard questions are going to get a little bit different. Uh, I don't know about these Nature's Claims, so let's just toss, just toss them for now. And this seems all right. Um, there's zero graveyard hate in this main deck, so maybe one of these Nile Spell Bombs should be here. And one of these uh, seal of fires could go in the sideboard. Um, obviously, without as many opposing Luris decks, you don't necessarily need the main deck graveyard hate. But I'm just sort of spitballing here as we're going along. So yeah, uh, we are going to do the other Jun decks. So we're going to hit the idle stream and uh, hop over to that one in a few moments. So stick around with me live. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you hit that like button, that subscribe button. Check out some of my other videos, and we'll be back in a few moments here if you're hanging out. <laughs> 